Welcome back to Rockline. I'm Bob Coburn. We're about to welcome Eric Johnson to the program. First of all, let me give you the phone number, 1-800-344-ROCK. 1-800-344-ROCK. What Austin, Texas has known for over a half a decade, the rest of the world is beginning to find out, and that is that Eric Johnson is one hell of a guitar player. With accolades pouring in from other guitarists and a reputation for perfectionism, Eric is on the brink of becoming one of the all-time greats. And we'd like to welcome live from the club called Steamboat in Austin, Texas, Eric Johnson. Eric, good evening and welcome. Hey, BC. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Uh, right. Now, what's going on there in Austin tonight? Are you in the middle of a set back there? Yeah, we're, uh, we've just got back into town. We've been on the road for months and months, and we came home to our hometown, and we're playing a few nights here at Steamboat um, for, you know, just kind of doing a few gigs in Austin, then we're going to San Antonio after that. Now, have you actually gone out on stage tonight, or, or, or do you go out in a few minutes? Or I mean, what's no, the story? No, we, we've done one set, and then we have a following set that we're going to pursue here just in a bit and get out there and we'll whack it up <laughs> well, thanks for talking to us live oh. and nationwide uh, right in the middle of uh, of doing your gig back there are, are you going to tour more I, I know you were out there for a long time do you have anything else lined up or? well we uh we have the san antonio show and then we're going to be off for a while we've kind of basically been on the road since march and mm. uh, we're going to take a little time off and try to uh write some new music and and get everything together, get our clothes to the cleaners and stuff. <laughs> and that kind of thing. <laughs> say hi to your friends and family again. Yeah, you really. Go really see if my mom and dad still remember me. <laughs> <really. laughs> show them pictures first. <laughs> <laughs> Better phone them, let them know you're coming. <laughs> yeah, really, they probably lock the door. Now, uh, you did some dates, I think, primarily out west with Joe Satriani, and that was a guitar yeah. lover's dream. Could something like that ever happen again in the future, do you think? That type oh, of Oh, I'd deal? love to, Bob. I'd love to do it any time. It was, it was a really nice experience. Um, Joe was great. He you know, gave us that opportunity to do that, and he's he's really a fine player. I was really, uh, it was really nice to be able to, you know, watch his show and and also his band, you know, Jonathan and Stu, they're really good. It, yeah. was, it was really nice. I'd love to do it any time. Now, the first song we're going to play tonight is uh, a yet unreleased, I guess it will be coming out shortly, but an unreleased live version of Cliffs of Dover. Was this recorded on a TV show in Austin City Limits? I believe so, yes. Mm -hmm. Have you even heard this yet? Well, I haven't heard it since we uh, mixed the City Limits show, which has been a while, probably a year or two. So I'm not sure. It could be completely debauched with all sorts of wild <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> well, That's why it took me so long to record and fix all the mistakes. Fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> yeah, really. I was... Here we go. Eric Johnson, Cliffs of Dover on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. Hit it.
one of the biggest instrumentals ever in rock and roll radio. Cliffs of Dover, Eric Johnson, live version of that song. And we're going to take a call. Our first for Eric for the night is Rick in Dansville, New York, a listener of 96 WCMF in Rochester. And Rick, you're on the rock line with Eric. How you doing, Eric? Okay, Rick. How are you, man? Pretty good. The first thing I'd like to say is hi to my friend Jeff Yeager at Ithaca College. Oh, Both great. Johnson fans. <clears throat> and my question is, is what's the inspiration behind uh, Cliffs of Dover? Well, it's kind of a melody I just had for many years. I, um, I had this, you know, da 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 and I didn't know what to do with it. And I, I like, demoed many versions of it, but finally the, the guitar bass drum one was the one we used. But I didn't really have a title for it, and I played it for a friend of mine. And... Uh, my friend just said, God, that sounds kind of regal, kind of like royalty effect. And I said, God, oh, great. And he said, yeah, like the white, like the Cliffs of Dover or something. I said, well, I'll call it that then. So I was just kind of, I was just searching for a title. There you go, Rick. There's a story behind the song. It's kind of become a signature song for you now, hasn't it? So, of some sorts, yeah. We've, we've been playing it for about six years now. Let's take another call. We're going to talk with Lance now as we head to Atlanta. 96 Rock is our affiliate there. And Lance would like to introduce you to Eric Johnson. Oh, how are you, Eric? Okay, Lance, how you doing, man? Uh, all right. I'd like to know on the song Avia Musicom, it sounds sort of like uh, Jimi Hendrix. I wonder if you were mm -hmm. influenced by him at all. Yeah, very much so. He was one of my biggest influences because he was such a dynamic uh, artist, you know, even more than a guitarist. Just his artistic stature was, it just really touched your heart, you know, gave me a lot of inspiration. I know you're a big fan of 60s music. Who else did you like as guitar players? You've got to be a mm. Beck fan, too. Huh? Yeah, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, of course, Page. I um, like uh, a lot of cats from the 60s, actually. Mike Bloomfield and uh, Wes Montgomery and a lot of different people. You can hear a little bit of that, and you're playing, too, kind of an, an amalgamation of some of those people. Yeah. It's not the soft, deft touch that Wes Montgomery had. Yeah, he was a great player. He had a great tone. Lance, thank you for being on the Rock Line with Eric. And we're going to speak with Holly now in Oklahoma City. Rock 100, the cat is our affiliate there. And Holly, you're on the Rock Line. Hi, Eric. How you doing? Okay, Holly. How are you? I'm doing just good, man. I caught your gig Saturday night in, uh, in Norman. And I just wanted to let you oh. know that it was a mind-blowing experience. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I got two questions for you. First one is, might you attempt some classical music on your next album? Um, I don't know about the next album, Holly, but uh, I would like to eventually because I just uh, I just found a classical guitar and I've been kind of beating away on it, playing it through Marshall stacks and you know, but not really, just kind of been playing it around. It's like a whole new scene to you know play. You got to play it right with your fingers and stuff. So I'm trying to to get that together. I did one kind of neo classical type thing, you know, on on the Tones record with a, a, a nylon string guitar, but I'd like to do some more of it as soon as I can learn how to play it correctly. Well, it sounds like you hit on something there, Holly. And what else for you tonight? Okay, the other question I have is, why did you switch record companies after only one record? Well, it's kind of a, more of a business decision. I think, you know, things just kind of got up in the air uh, business-wise with the label and stuff. And so we just had a, a two-year hiatus before we were able to, uh, um, you know, reaccumulate the interest to sign. And it so happened to be with Cinema Capital. Now, we, we talked a moment ago about the, the, the classical guitar, and uh, you've uh, demonstrated some jazz feelings and, of course, rock and roll. Do you have any, uh, any interest in, say, Spanish guitar or anything like that? Are there other forms yeah. that interest you? Yeah, I, I had the rare opportunity to, to go with some friends to see uh, Sabicas play flamenco guitar um, before he passed away, and I was just totally blown away. It's just so amazing, and it's just this free art form where, you know, it's like the classical-type idiom, but it's just so much improvisational. And it's it's um, it's neat because there's the same um, there's the same impetus behind it as you find in rock music, you know, like a lot of spontaneity, a lot of jam, and a lot of uh, you know improv. But mm -hmm. it, it's in more of a legit form. It's really cool. Holly, good call. Thank you. We're taking a time out. We're coming back with more music, more time for you to talk with Eric Johnson live and nationwide on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. To Rockline and Bob Coburn, we're with Eric Johnson, and we're playing some songs from Avia Music Hum, his second album, an album that has really hung in there. It's had a tremendous life, and that's nice to see. In fact, this is the new single release from that album. This is called Righteous, Eric Johnson on Rockline. <laughs>
righteous indeed. Eric Johnson from Avia ah, Music Com. Next call for Eric from Orlando, Florida. Chris is on the line. He is a listener of WDIZ. Hi there. How you doing? Hey, Chris. Hey, uh, I got two questions for you. Okay. Okay, the first one is, um, when you write your songs, do you start off acoustically and then try to relate it to the electric guitar, or uh, it's just different depending on the song? Let's start with that one, yeah. Yeah, it depends on the song. Usually, I, a lot of times I start on piano, and then I like uh, transpose it over to electric guitar. And sometimes if it's a soft song on a piano, I'll transpose it to acoustic. And then maybe half the time, um, I write on the original instrument that I'm going to play it on. Chris, I hate to do this. We have so many people that want to talk to Eric. I've got to limit you to one question. So we're going to move on to Jeff in Winnipeg, Manitoba, listener of City FM. Hi, Jeff. Hi there. Hey. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. It's a pleasure to really be talking to you. Oh, I'd right. You know, uh, with the huge commercial success of Cliffs of Dover, do you think that many more uh, guitarists will be able to have hits with instrumentals? I hope so. I think it would be great. You know, Steve Vai and, and Joe Satriani really opened a lot of doors for people and with their music, and, and it'd be great if... A lot of people could follow suit with just more instrumental music, just kind of, you know, music to fill the space inside or something. Uh, you know, not, not maybe not only guitar music, but all different types of instruments, yeah. more it's instrumental things. It's becoming a trend, don't you think? I think people are um, more open to it, more susceptible to, to instrumental music now. Yeah. There, there was a period back in the 50s and 60s when uh, it was much more acceptable, and it kind of went away, and it's coming back again, and that's good. Uh -huh. Jeff, thanks yeah. for the call. Let's move on to Greenville, South Carolina. It's Doug's turn, a listener of Rock 101.1. Doug, you're on the rock line. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Okay, how are you doing? And you are the best. I saw you back in November 17th in Atlanta. Unreal mm -hmm. show. Well, we just got back from your um, area of the country just about two weeks ago. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Um, I read a couple of months ago in um, Goldmine, Ma Goldmine Magazine about an album that you recorded a while back but um, weren't ar allowed to release because of legal mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you could um, tell us the name of that album and if there might be any hopes that we might be able to hear it in the future. Well, what it was titled at originally was called Seven Worlds, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. It's kind of out of my control at this point. It belongs to other uh, other forces, and, and it kind of is up to them what they, they do with it. But uh, it was something I did like in the late 70s, and we were supposedly had a record deal. You know, it's that thing where you, know, you chase the chase the record deal carrot forever and ever, <laughs> you know, trying to get an album out. But it was, you know, well, they the guy that owns that music. You know, he says something. Uh, I've been told to the great He's thinking about releasing it, but I don't know. I'm sure as you get hotter and hotter, he'll think more and more about it. And Doug, thank you for the call. It's Hunter's turn in Norman, Oklahoma. Rock 100, the cat is our affiliate there. And Hunter, you're on the air with us now. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Okay, how you doing? Hey, I saw you play at Norman Saturday night. You sound great. Oh, thanks. Oh, somebody else called it. Was it the Norman show? Yeah. 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 Hey, uh, that must have been the two people that showed up. Oh, no, right. <laughs> uh, my question is, uh, where do you come up with the titles of your songs since they're mostly instrumental? Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird because sometimes I can't decide... Um, Tommy's named several of them, the drummer, Tommy Taylor, and uh, a friend of mine, a uh, real close friend of mine, has named a lot of them, too. And usually I'll let other people name them because I, I don't know what to call them. Or I'll end up, if I name them, it'll be some kind of silly title that doesn't make sense. Huh? I, I have a better knack at, you know, naming the songs that, you know, have vocals. Even though they're instrumentals, the title do, does end up adding personality to the song, don't you think? Yeah, it, sometimes it, it's real crucial and it's kind of a sensitive area, you know, to find the right title that makes sense. Maybe somebody with a better perspective that's sitting back listening to the music rather than you naming it yourself. For me, sometimes it's good, you know, because they've got more of a, a a more magnanimous perspective rather than being so isolated into it and stuff. There you go. Let's move on. We're going to talk to Michael in New Orleans listening to WRNO. Hi there. Hi, Eric. It's uh, Michael from Soundcheck of New Orleans. I wanted to say congratulations on the guitar player thing. Oh, hey, I know you. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, man. Good. Do Great. Uh, oh, thanks, was, man. Uh, it's good to hear you, and I'm glad Rockline finally got you on. Oh, Me man. too. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Mike. Did I you ever find those picks? <laughs> time to get this last album together, and I wonder if uh, if uh, we're going to have to wait a long time for the next one. I know you did the, redid the solos and stuff on that uh, on that album. We're going to have to wait a long time now again. Well, hopefully, um, we've we've learned a lot about it was it was a lot of learning the technique um, to record correctly the sound. And the, the engineer I worked with, Richard Mullen, and myself, and we spent many hours trying to hone the the technique for at least the particular sound we were trying to go for so maybe next time it'll be a lot easier um, i think the main thing next time will be just doing the you know the writing and the orchestration the arranging which hopefully you know a lot of the writing's been done already but there's a lot of orchestration and arranging needs to be done but we'll hopefully it'll be a little won't take quite as long 
Hey, Michael, I'm glad you got on. And the guitar player thing that Michael referred to is that Eric was voted number one overall guitarist for 1990 by Guitar Player Magazine. And this is I one think of actually, the... Well, go ahead, a, correct it me. Was a, actually, well, it was a tie with Steve Vai, I think. Wow. Uh, tie for that. Wow, that's Steve a nice too. person to be tied with. <laughs> yeah, he's great. And here's one of the reasons that Eric uh, got such recognition. This one is called Trademark from Avia Musicom. It doesn't get any finer than this.
Good grief, that's good. Trademark the name of that from Avia Musicom. Eric Johnson. We'll be back with Eric in just a moment on Rockline and the Global Satellite Network. Get ready for an unpredictable evening where anything could happen as we welcome Roseanne Barr along with her husband, Tom Arnold, to Rockline. You know, I believe that men are on this earth for one reason and one reason only, to serve me. And two, to bring back food and build a comfortable hive for me and my larvae. And three, to willingly move on when it's time for a younger drone with more stamina. Also on tap is one of rock and roll's premier guitar players. He's still got the blues, and he'll tell you all about it. It's Gary Moore on Rockline. But I've still got the blues for you. Heat up a cold December evening with a sizzling double bill next Monday night with Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold and Gary Moore on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. Are back and here's how you can get up close and personal with a future Rockland guest. All you have to do is send a postcard with your name, address, age, day, and evening phone number, and the radio station you listen to Rockline under close up care of Rockline, P.O. Box 4383, Hollywood, California, 90078. Gotta be at least 18, gotta have it to us by December 19th. Next call for Eric from Tokyo, Waka is the caller's name, and she is listening to Bay FM 78. Good evening. Hello, Eric. Hi, Waka. How are you? Great to talk to you. Oh, nice to talk to you, too. Okay, here's my question. Okay. All right. What type of music did you perform at the beginning of your career? And the second I'm sorry, one, what type of music did I perform where? Huh? What type of music did he perform where? At the beginning of your career. At the where? I'm, I didn't did follow the question. Well, you have to, have to start over again, please, Waka. Okay. What type of music did you perform at the beginning of your career? Of your, oh, okay. of your career. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And what oh. memories do you have of that time? I have a lot of fond memories. Um, my brother originally got me in a guitar when I was like 11 years old, and it was friends of his that I met that we started hanging out. We were, it was rock, kind of like surf music. I was listening to the Ventures and Shantae's and um, Elvis Presley, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis, stuff like that. And then I started getting into like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and the Yardbirds. And then it, as soon as I got into the Yardbirds, and that's when I realized the blues thing. And then I went back, tracked, and you know, got some of the Albert King, BB King, and Buddy Guy, and you know, and then got into the Cream and Blues Breakers and stuff. Between Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, and Eric Clapton, that pretty well was the cornerstone of rock and roll guitar to me, and they were all Yardbirds guitarists. Yeah. All three of them. Waka, thank you. Let's talk with Nick, our last call of the night. He's in St. Louis, KC95, our station. Good evening. Hey, Nick. Hello. You're on. Yes. Eric, I saw you last Monday in St. Louis. Oh, really? And that was the best show, and I just want to say you've really topped off my day. Today's my birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Nick. Thanks. Great, man. New guitar. <laughs> How old are you? I'm uh, 15 today. Great. Happy I'm birthday. actually talking to you live. Okay. You mentioned that, uh, like, you are talking about George, your song for George. Mm hmm You wrote another song, and it was, uh, you, that wasn't the, the right song that he liked. It was mm -hmm. a, a different song. You know, yeah, you hear that I wrote other it. song, and I wrote it's it. called? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think he's finished. Well, yeah, I wrote a song called Hard Times. It was more of a blues piece that actually there wasn't, it was just guitar and drums. And it was kind of a real, more of a straightforward blues kind of thing. And um, I was going to put it on the record. I just, I didn't know. And that was the one that George liked the most. But George is, he, he he's an 80 year old uh, man that uh, he's a very, very close friend of the families. And um, he's a wonderful guy. Um, he's, he is real fond of the blues and he's always telling me, well, you've done a record now where you play a lot of licks so now you just need to jump on the guitar and whoop up on it. And that's what he says to me. He keeps saying, you got to whoop the guitar, you got to whoop the guitar, you got to jump on it. Just play some, just jump on the guitar. So and he wanted me to put that other song on, but I figured at this point I was, I was playing the other one better. So I put it on the record at that point. Nick, there you go. Thanks for listening and calling everybody. The Rockline Address, P.O. Box 4383, Hollywood, California, 90078. Next week, a great double bill featuring Roseanne Barr and her husband, Tom Arnold, and guitar great Gary Moore. And we'll wrap up 1990 on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve with a look back at some of the greatest moments 
on Rockline, including terrific acoustic performances from some of our guests during the past year. And then in 1991, it's more of rock and roll's biggest names. Joining us live will be ACDC, In Excess, Queen, Scorpions, David Lee Roth, REM, and much more. Special thanks tonight to Linda Walker and George Niemer of Q Prime Management, Alan Orman from Geffen Records, Joe Priestnitz and Kristen Nagel, to Danny Crooks and the entire staff of Steamboat in Austin, Texas, for their hospitality and hosting Eric Johnson on stage and uh, on Rockline tonight. And they literally have opened up the whole club to us tonight. And I want to wish Danny's mom happy birthday back in South Carolina. And also a big thank you to Ginger, Sharon, and everybody at Southwest Bell for their invaluable assistance. To Steve Bumpus and to Frank, Jeff, and Tommy from Tesla. And to you, Eric, great job with the record. Nice job on the show tonight. And uh, good luck with that other set you got there in Austin tonight. Thanks, Bob. And Thank you. Thanks for having us. You man. bet. You come back anytime. I'll see you next time, all right? All right. With the holiday season on, please do not drink and drive. I know there's somebody listening to me right now in their car that has been drinking and driving. Please don't do that. We're, we're talking about you, so watch what you do out there. It just doesn't mix well, and uh, we're all aware of that now. Um, I'm BC, and I'll be seeing you in a week. Listening to Rockline, brought to you in part by Budweiser. Nothing beats a bud.